So arts and cultural studies in Ghana is underfunded and many artists are discouraged by the stereotype involved and lack of job opportunities. But new graduates from the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology are hoping to reverse this trend through a series of exhibitions to solicit support for arts in the country. The latest exhibition opens in Accra today, actually, later this evening. Joy Justice Justice Beidou spent time with some of the students and it came through with the following report. Inside Ghana's foremost museum for science and technology, these young people are breaking barriers. These are students of the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology setting up for their end of school exhibition. But the lack of support for the arts in Ghana means these students are graduating into a minefield of uncertainty. Amongst them, Tracy Thompson, whose installation explores the uses of plastics. Honestly, it's not easy being an artist, and I don't think that this is like um, an exhibition to, okay, I'm done as a final year, so it's as though I have a certain art form, I'm working it, so I'm going to continue that for the rest of my life, you know. I think it's a more of a more challenging experience where I have to go and mature as an artist. Like Tracy, many of these students want to develop newer ways of doing art. We are not necessarily relying on opportunities that exist because those uh, we know are uh, lean. What we are doing is trying to invent uh, possibilities, invent new ways that we can survive the, the hardships or the difficulties of our time with this show and uh, with contemporary art production. This is a country where the average university student is expected to fit into shoes of conventional professions like medicine or law. Many of the young people here have already braved the odds in a society that is usually stereotypical about what a university education should offer. But now, moving into the real world of work, it will take more than just their passion to make ends meet. And that is because as rich as this country's cultural and art history is, very little of it is documented locally. Like many young graduates in Ghana, the road ahead may be bumpy and sometimes unfriendly. But it seems these students may well be the game changers ready to turn around the story of art in a country that has plenty of it. Justice Beidou, Joy News, Accra. So joining us are two people that you've already uh, seen in this shot. Tracy Thompson is an artist and a fresh graduate from the KNUST. Good morning, Tracy. Good and I asked, <laughs> did you put something in your nose? I thought it was like, you know, some style or something, uh, but apparently no. not. No. It was it's for protection. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Kwesi Ohene Aye is a, a curatorial team for Orderly Disorderly Arts Exhibition. That's the title of the exhibition, by the way, and he's a member of that team that's putting this together. Good morning to you. Good morning. Uh, thanks for being here. So, fresh graduates, this is what you studied. <laughs> yes. What do you think about the opportunities out there now that you are out there yeah. uh, in the world? Are you jobless, would you say? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I wouldn't like to use the word jobless, but um, okay, it's quite challenging being an artist here in Ghana, of course, but that also presents itself with a lot of opportunities. And um, we are taking advantage of the challenges on the ground and doing our own exhibitions and that alone is giving us a lot of exposure mm. internationally so it's it's good it's a very good start okay so now Chrissy, i know you're a member of the the you know the whole group that's putting this together mm -hmm. but did you also graduate from knust yes I'm okay an alumnus of the um, department of painting and sculpture okay so this is what you've been doing because my understanding is this is not the first time you are doing this particular exhibition no, um, so Orderly Disorderly is the, uh, it completes the trilogy of large-scale exhibitions at the 
Museum of Science and Technology in Accra. Mm. So this would be the third time we're at the same venue um, in our third year um, con consistently. Why orderly disorderly? <laughs> uh, so the exhibition uh, this year we focused, the two previous exhibitions um, in 2015, there was the Gown Must Go to Town, which honored um, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. Mm. Uh, in 2016, there was Cornfields in Accra, which honored Amma Tebu, the poet. And this year, we decided to uh, focus on the life work and honor the life work of Professor Abladi Glover, who is um, uh, a distinguished artist and educator. So he was orderly disorderly? No, his practice, <laughs> um, he paints. And okay. he, would, he would paint a lot of action scenes, and so crowd scenes, a lot of... But he, he sought to capture the mood of the um, of the scenes that he would paint, rather than mm. depict them, um, uh, you know, in in realistic form. So okay. uh, for him, the the market scenes, the crowd scenes, they were they seemed disorderly, mm -hmm. but he could see the logic. The order in there. Good. So okay. uh, his practice is dubbed order uh, order in disorder. But what we are doing is. Um, and you can see immediately that it captures the paradoxes, you know, like a paradoxical my situation. Mm. And so uh, orderly disorderly is really trying to come to terms with the paradoxes or the contradictions of our time. Okay. And then um, as artists, how do we deal with them? Okay. So, yes. But artists are like, you know, I don't know, like writers, like you're trying to send a certain message across through the works that you've done. Pretty much. Yeah. But <laughs> usually the ordinary person may not be able to easily decode the kind of message that you're sending across. So would you say that art, the kind of, the, the kind that you do is for everyone? Certainly. Um, I think that what makes it u universal is the, uh, the aspect of poetry that we look to put in it. Because if it's poetry, then um, we leave it for interpretation. It is a bit more open-ended, and it's uh, so that is where we think that art has that potential to. For example, with music, I listen to music in Kikuyu, and I don't speak any Kikuyu. Mm. You know, so it's about the mood, it's about the um, the the energy or the vibe, I guess. You okay. know, so it transcends the limitations of language or the barriers of it, and mm. I think that's what the potential of art brings. Yeah, is there a market for it though in Ghana? Um, there is a growing market. Uh, I can't say there is no market. Uh, there is, but there certainly is. There, there's more that needs to be done um, nationally and um, communally as well. I think that generally, uh, interestingly, the art, the economy of art runs in a, in a bit, uh, it's a bit unorthodox. So whereas most sectors thrive on their primary market. In art, it's a, uh, the secondary market is really what determines a lot. Okay. And so, for example, like at, um, at art fairs or at art auctions, um, that is where the value, uh, once the value of a work soars at an auction or at, or at a fair, it almost immediately affects the primary market. Mm. And the primary being like... Um, the local market. Uh, not necessarily, what? like a gallerist or a dealer walking into an artist's studio and buying the work f from the artist. Okay. That's what I mean by the primary market. Okay. And so once it enters the secondary market, then you have like the gallerists and um, other, other institutions dealing or reselling the work mm. pretty much. Mm. And that, so there is, um, uh, yeah, and and it's a bit more uh, complex. Okay. So this whole complex situation, you told your parents he, this is what you wanted to do, <laughs> Casey. <laughs> yes, they've known this since I was a child. <laughs> I've always wanted to pursue art. Yeah? Yes. So uh, is, this, is this a passion? Are you also mindful that you have to make a living out of what you do? Yes. Okay. <laughs> so what what's so what have you identified? Where are you going? Like where do you go and get a job after you've done painting and arts at the university? <laughs> okay, that's a very interesting question. Um okay, I know that um 
right now with the ads that is now growing um, and also being a fine artist. Mm -hmm. um, my interest is in fine arts and we do basically with exhibitions. So yes, it's a lot of faith out there. Yes, Because so you're almost like an entrepreneur. It means that you have to be running your yes. own thing, essentially. Yes. Yeah. Um, there are many artists who run maybe other side jobs and all that. But um, the basic line is like keep working at what you love doing. And definitely um, you <laughs> the more you participate in exhibitions and get that kind of exposure, you definitely get people to invest. Yeah. Uh, Chrissy has given yeah. me some pictures. I'm hoping that we will be able to get those pictures on oh the screen okay. so that you can see and appreciate some of the finished works that they exhibit. Because uh, some of the works you've given me are, uh, are works that you put up at past exhibitions as well. Yes. Um, okay. they, w they are from uh, 2015 when we had the gown must go to town at the Museum of Science and Technology and 2016 when we had cornfields in Accra. Okay, so how far has some of your exhibitors gone, you know, from those exhibitions? Where have they been to? Um, actually, uh, <laughs> we can talk of, uh, I could name Ibrahim Mahama who is an alumnus of the college like myself who uh, has now been, he has participated in um, some, some, some of the biggest art uh, exhibitions mm. worldwide. So namely the documenta, the recent um, documenta that was opened and in Kassel, by Germany, as well as the Venice Biennial. Um, Baita Kwe has also uh, showed in various venues in Accra, we have so many. Uh, the scale of the exhibitions are really, this year, we are showing about 104 artists, you know, and they range from fresh graduates to um, alumni to guest artists that we're featuring. And the guest artists, uh, some living and others who have passed, mm. you know, so it's, it's a big pool, and um, the the principle is to inspire something in young people, mm. and then once the torch is lit, then they can carry it and um, sustain it, hopefully throughout their lives. Yeah. yeah. Ever thought of giving up yourself, crazy? Oh, of course. Yeah. <laughs> many times. <laughs> many times. Uh, but I think that is where we grind. Um, they say there's no. What's the point of a conviction if it's not tested? Mm. You know, so w once you're coming up against the barriers and the roadblocks, you, if you, um, if it's something that you really want to do, you're able to, or you must, scale the odds. Yeah. So um, one thing I also wanted to draw on was the dynamics of the art world. So, so for example, there are events like the art fairs, which are described uh, like the. The art fairs are more like the commercial um, events. And so galleries and things com come together and then they sell artists' works. And so th those ones are more uh, geared towards a financial um, bent. And then we have the events like the biennials and things which happen and are more curatorially oriented. And mm. so they do not necessarily, you know, uh, bring you money. Good, okay. but they also it's like um, economic cap uh, capital and symbolic capital, which okay. are equally important. Mm. And so, for artists, these are um, to show in an exhibition. The goal is not always to sell the work, yeah. Because once the work is accumulating its s s symbolic value, yeah. it almost always translates into. Okay economic yeah. value. So right. those are the things that we mm -hmm. are mindful of. And then Tracy, what are you exhibiting today? Because uh, this shows uh, what? Yes. Th today at 5? Mm -hmm. Yes, it okay. opens at 5.30 p.m. today on the Barnes Road at the Museum of Science and Technology, just um, adjacent the Tigo head office. Mm. So uh, please come through by 5.30 p p.m. we're open. Okay. Tracy, what should we expect from you? <laughs> is this your first okay, time? This you is your first time? No. I know I you've done the campus stuff, yes. but out there, like. 
Um, yes, last year's exhibition, which was the cornfields in Accra, I participated. But you were, you were a student then? Yes, I was uh -huh. a student. Now you're on student. your own. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's going to be awesome. Mm. Um, nothing, as okay, it's going to be shocking to some people with yeah. the kind of materials that are Can you be that? What we're showing on the screen, this was somebody's yes. uh, arts, yeah. somebody's works yes. last, was it last year? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You can beat that? <laughs> but what are you doing, by okay. the way? I saw yeah. all those okay. snail shells and things. Is that yours? No, ah. that's not mine. I work with uh, synthetic materials, okay. but I'm working with plastics. Oh, styrofoam. okay. 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 Mm -hmm. Amazing stuff. And uh, mm -hmm. please come through to see. There are works that range from v video to graffiti to, uh, you know, um, horticulture to... What's this person doing? Sorry. Um, Selling like a, a Bobby Paddy and <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> this is like an installation and this is um, this is like a photo opportunity, you know, where ah. a, a member of the audience poses with the work. But oh, so this is somebody's work. Yes. So yes, ah, so wait wait hang on. This <laughs> is because this is like something that you see in the market. Yes. Mm -hmm. Good. Oh, so yeah. this is just a set. The idea is we are sourcing inspiration from the different. Um, facets of our mm. social life and okay. so they range from uh, performances that you know somebody may decide okay. to, uh, to perform or they may even take um, food stuffs and things mm. and imitate uh, what happens there yeah. so really describe what we're seeing on the screen too uh, this is the work by Lois Ade Clark where she uh, painstakingly all the dots you see are hand drawn you know, so it's a very laborious process. It <laughs> takes time, and that's what makes her work. And then the repetition of dots become patterns that you know um, mm. she can't control. But she, uh, the idea is that it is a painstaking uh, process that you know she go goes through, Amazing. and she's recreating ideas of labor. Oh, and so I like on. this. This is what. <laughs> <laughs> this is Ibrahim Mahama's work, where he um, this is a tapestry of the. Belap sack. There's a famous so Ibrahim Mahama. In, uh, no, okay, yes. Yeah. So, <laughs> Ibrahim so let's, Maha, let's this is not the famous. Uh -huh, this Ibrahim. is not the president's brother. No, no. Uh, this okay. <laughs> this <laughs> is <laughs> this is an mm -hmm. artist. Okay. Yeah. And right. uh, he he works with the cocoa um, the cocoa sacks. Oh. You know, okay. So then he pieces them together and they become a, uh, like um, a fabric that oh, he drapes okay. or um, that he uses in many ways. I know. like this. Very yeah. nice. So, Ibrahim is participating today. Most of the artists are also there. And Please Tracy is featuring, through. definitely. Tracy is there. I want to see your works. Please come <laughs> through. Okay, maybe you have to <laughs> well, come This there. is nice, too. We, we, we have to wrap up this conversation. Yeah. <laughs> okay. uh, so, keep enjoying the pictures that we're rolling on the screen. So, it's 5.30 p.m. today. Today. Uh, venue again? Museum of Science and Technology um, on the Barnes Road near Accra Polytechnic. Mm. Uh, but this is not a day's exhibition. No, the exhibition runs, it opens today, but it runs uh, for two months okay. until 1st September. And, okay. and we're open every day between uh, 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. Okay. Every day from Monday to Sunday. Mm. So um, whoever is not able to make it today, you, you can come and any day during the week between okay. today and 1st September. All right. I'm, I'm definitely going to pass through. Uh, thank you for coming, though, thank uh, you for Chrissy having and you. Tracy. I'm sure our parents are proud of you. Mm -hmm. Very proud. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. I wish, you, I wish you well, really. Thank, thank, you. thank you. All the best. You too.